Welcome to Fairfield Public Access Television. I'm Susan Kessel, the station manager, and I'm here with a longtime, very good friend and uh, favorite person, Christopher Bennett, a sculptor who now lives in Bettensport. And uh, we're here at his studio. We're going to visit with Chris about uh, the, the road that he's taken to get where he is now and a special project that is dear to my heart and to his, I believe. Um, Chris and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, over 79? <laughs> at That's least, close. at least. I think we've discussed this before. When I was uh, president of the Fairfield Art Association, we, our board was trying to decide uh, a sculpture for our park and, and Mark Schaefer, uh, thought of the idea for the William Coop and Friend and mm -hmm. uh, you were at a stage in your life where you were uh, looking for something to maybe and come back to Fairfield because you grew up around Packwood? I, for a while, yeah, until I was for 12. While. Yeah. And, I still had relatives. Okay. So you came back into the area and we commissioned you, the Fairfield Art Association, to do William Coop and Friend. And uh, from there, uh, we, we had you do another piece, which was the Leapfrog. William Coop is in the Fairfield Square and uh, was dedicated in 79, I believe. 81, I think. 81. Okay. <laughs> it started right. in 79 okay. and dedicated in 81. I'm, yeah. I'm basing this on my children's ages in my <laughs> mind, and you know how you lose track of that. <laughs> uh, Chris has a five-year-old boy. It'll be six in January. Christopher. Christopher B. Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a real sweetheart. He's at school. He better be. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so uh, you have your hands full uh, with him. Oh, sure. He's, he's real creative and always building something or drawing something. Or you think whatever. he'll follow in your footsteps? I don't know. I mean, it changes quite a bit. Yeah. He wants to be a, a structure man. I don't that's know if that's a good start. I don't know if that's <laughs> destruction or construction. I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably a little of both. It changes. Yeah. So. yeah. He's got his little hard hat and everything. He's always constructing something. Uh -huh. Go karts and what he can do and that's drawing. That's great. That's great. Um, you lived in Fairfield for several years. Thirteen. Thirteen, and then I think um, you've been in Bettensport how long? This will be the eighth year. Eight years, time flies. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a studio here, your workspace, and you've got a lot of projects going on. And like I said, in Fairfield, we also commissioned you then to do the uh, the Leapfrog, which is in the Carnegie Building lawn. And you used three children that you used for models. Mm -hmm. And um, both of those projects are very important to Fairfield, I think, define part of our heritage. And so you've come down here to Bentonsport, and now you're doing a lot of different projects. Hmm. There was, I had a, a numerous uh, public works there for about six years, just one right after another. Then it ebbed for about a year, and now it's going. picking up again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good. Got, got a lot. I know one of the projects that Iowans are very familiar with is the Hands that mm -hmm. is at Veterans Memorial Auditorium in Des Moines, mm -hmm. and um, that was a big project. Mm -hmm. It was well, yeah. It, was, it doesn't seem so big now because all of them are about that like size. That. They were big. <laughs> no, well, <gasps> not that tall, but they're kind of hands. That like volume of concentration and things to do. That's a it's a medium sized project or mm, small project to what I'm <laughs> bidding for now, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> um, I also was in Oskaloosa at the George Daly Auditorium and I saw a piece. I walked outside and on a park bench I saw um, a piece and I said this has got to be Chris's. That that's let's see I put that in and Summer of 97, I think. Okay, it was a beautiful piece. Was it a lady? It was a man. Man? It was a man. Okay. He, he was um, Oscar Lewis's $6 million man. Never spent a penny of it, never wanted it. 
but just gave it away to the city. And that's how they built the George Daly. From the interest of the money. Okay, so I'm yeah. sure that's George Daly. That's George Daly. His thing was playing checkers. Okay. <laughs> so wow, that's, that's what, what a he great did. tribute. He, yeah, he wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> but <laughs> he just <laughs> rather played another game of checkers. <laughs> well, he could sit down there with him and play. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it, the, he's playing basically playing checkers with himself I mean, because he was a hermit. I and mean, he was a recluse. His whole family were recluses. So the, the, he's playing checkers himself, and the title of the piece is My Move. <laughs> it's, because it's always his move. George right. knew what was going on. Right. He wasn't, he wasn't any idiot. So I see that you have done some works that are tributes to some uh, very important people in Important Iowa too. And unusual people. Unusual. I the William Coop is mm -hmm. uh, He's an unusual person too. The first white born child in Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you learned a little bit about him when you did the piece. Uh, you've done a piece for Pella or um, I did a, a bust for okay. Pella for um, it, it's now Pella Corp, I believe, but it was Roll Screen Company there. Uh huh. And what was that of? Of Pete Kuiper, the founder. Okay. It's in their okay. their corporate center. Any other people that you've done uh, as memorials or tributes to? Oh sure, I do <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the memorials and tributes—that's what I do, basically. Uh -huh. I mean, I do a lot of work. Oh, there's one in, in Tama, say, and there's uh -huh. one in Laporte City. Um, where else? Well, I mean, Chief Mahaska in Ottumwa, uh -huh. as one of the pieces I did for Indian Hills. Okay. But, but there are a lot of memorials. I've done lots of smaller ones too, relief busts and. And that's small sculptures. That's what we're going to talk about a little later. Is a, a tribute, a memorial that you're doing now, and at the studio you have it completed in clay. Mm -hmm. And that is um, for Virginia Turney Larson, who was a classmate of mine at Fairfield High School and Fairfield Schools, and um, is a very special person, and we will look at that pretty soon. But first, let's talk about some of the things that you have going on right now. What is this? Well, this, this is a minor part of a large project for uh, DMACC College in Ankeny. Uh, Des Moines Area Community College. These are, th I don't know if I can turn it or not, but there's three armatures here that you can't, you can't really see what's going on, but I, I've got some drawings here. And the, it's just a skeleton. Then I've got to make three more skeletons that are life size for torsos. Um, now, this is part that you're working on, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but there's a fountain and a waterfall and a little... This is a still pool. It's 12 feet across, it's on a five foot knoll, and a, and a four inch stainless steel tube as a ring to give it, and then lots of landscaping around it. It's more of an enclosed section. And these figures go on a stainless steel a pedestal at the height you see them, right in the center of that stainless steel framing. Uh -huh. Those are students, as they are on campus. One, she's going to be a mother soon and and she's contemplating her books and her child and thinking. And the other is he's kind of a second career student kind of carrying the weight of the world in his middle instead of in his shoulders. <laughs> Got his laptop computer on his arm and tapping that out, little little beard. Uh, blue collar type of guy. The the next one he's a, uh, should I show him some pictures? Sure. Uh, the next guy he's the poet. Oh, here's the girl. Now, I know you do a lot of research. When you did... And that's the man. When you did... Let's uh, see if we can find the poet. He's got his guitar and his kind of scraggly hair. <laughs> so you have these three figures. Yeah. And like I said, you do a lot of research when you're uh, putting together these things mm -hmm. that have a lot of meaning. And I know mm -hmm. that for the uh, William Coop, you had a baseball cap and the jacket represented mm -hmm representative of the time. Mm -hmm. And I know you had a KISS belt buckle. Mm -hmm. KISS the band. The band yes. on the little boy. Yes. And we in Fairfield had so many people complain 
that they didn't feel that that was appropriate, yeah. and we ended up changing it. Well, just not putting it on there. Well, right. <laughs> but the baseball cap and the, you know, everything. And so the laptop computer, the, the things in this are going to be representing the students in today. Oh, sure. And their lives. And sure. I went to conference with these people. To, I was in competition. I did a presentation. I just looked around the table and I just picked these people off the, <laughs> I represented them, so that's what sold it, I guess. <laughs> <Great> <laughs> they were just job. sitting around the table, each one of the ones I would represent, the, the two, the poet and the, uh -huh. the guy with his computer and then, and second career person. The, there wasn't someone nine months pregnant, there's certainly three or four young women there that uh -huh. could have fit the bill. So how far along is this project? Is this I've got the it? I, no, no, no. I, the, the cement work is done, it's in Des Moines, and, and okay. the big, the, the the rest we didn't. This is um, this is 25 feet across, and this is 25 feet high, and it's an eight-inch stainless steel tube. It's ma mainly framing. These are um, in the center there. Those are uh, torsos, and the woman she's found her. She's had her family. She's got the little boy and the teddy bear going out behind, and the and the man he's got in his second career. He's got his laptop under his arm and his tie flying and he's looking at his watch. It's kind of a move over, not a move up. <laughs> 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 and the and the poet, he's found his voice and he's uses that guitar like a lance and it just his movement and spirals out in space mm -hmm. and and uh, but it, and that's that's the the title of the piece is Stepping Stones. The the pools, cement pools, it's being poured as we speak. The platforms there and the stainless steel is being bent in mm -hmm. Chicago as so we speak. So your work here mm -hmm. is at what stage? I'm I've got the armatures on this and I'm and I'll be blocking that in. It should be blocked in by now and then I've got armatures for the others and okay. blocking those in. It should be done, ready to go to the foundry here in a few months. Okay. Now and over here we have uh, some other things going on. Tell us about those. Uh, oh, move your wire. <laughs> oh, these are some portraits of some kids, and in the bag is their sister. It kind of needs some work. I won't show it to you. And he'll have his arm around that child, and it was someone. Um, it's it's for it's a private commission uh -huh. of their of their children, and he, it'll be built up where the neck is here, shoulders and arm, and him and he's giving his little brother grief, I guess, just like <laughs> older brothers do. Little brothers do. do. All right. I do. Uh, one of my sidelines is I, uh, I'll enlarge pieces for other people. I've done it for a couple of artists, um, but this is a firefighter's memorial, and it goes, mm, I'm not sure, maybe Springfield, I'm not sure mm -hmm. where it is, but there's a, an artist north of St. Louis down by Hannibal, Missouri, and he made, he's got the commission, he's, he made the models, and I'm getting ready to enlarge it, make it six and a half feet, each one of them. And, and block in the styrofoam and the clay, just like I do all mine. So you're doing that part. Right, and then I'll crate it up and take it down to him, and he'll finish it. Then he takes it down to the foundry, and they mold it and cast it and everything. Okay. And there are three individual figures, and he's got the equipment. M mostly all I'm doing is the figures with the clothing on it. The equipment, he, he has actual equipment that he make molds on and make that on okay. bronze. Okay. And I don't know about the... The helmets, I'll have to call him about that, but at least I'll, I'll block it in and start for Now, have you on. done this very often, the enlargements for other artists? That's interesting. Yeah, I did a major piece here about two or three years ago. It's behind Trinity Hospital in uh, Rock Island okay. for Donna Young. She works for Isabel Bloom. Uh huh. Um, and I just put myself out to foundries that I have this service to do. Okay. And it's just what I do anyway. I mean, right. you got to do what you, I mean, I don't, I consider myself a servant to whoever wants my work. I'm like a plumber. Not everybody knows how to plumb, right? Definitely. <laughs> if, if they did, they might not want to do it themselves. Right, they hire definitely. somebody to do it that, that knows how wow. to do it. And I know how to create sculpture. I've been well trained. Uh -huh. So people hire me to do it. Now and I have, can do it on a large scale. You have some little pieces over here. What are these? Oh, these are uh, some that I, I'm making. Um, now, we have to remember that we're connected, <laughs> even though you don't like it. <laughs> uh, they're okay. not very well finished, uh, but I've got th there some that I'm doing reproductions. Uh, this one, th this one's called Lady in Bloom. Okay, it's I a think woman. I've seen that before or heard right. about it. Well, 
You might have heard about the life size when I did for uh, Iowa Methodist Hospital. Yes. It's yes. a different rendition of it. Okay. But this one's got more of a long gown on it, and she's got flowers in her uh -huh. arms. Uh, it's not a very good copy. It, I, I, I need to make another copy. The original I what sold it. What is it made already. out of? It's, it's a resin with a, the bronze fill, bronze powder okay. fill. Um, this one's called A Quiet Moment. It's just a woman with a kind of an Edwardian or Victorian dress mm -hmm. on. So I had, all these are in bronze, but they've been sold or given away or whatever. These are just copies. This one's not a very good copy. It's called Spring Wedding Song. And when it's in white marble, it's, it's real nice. It's mm -hmm. spirals and so on. A man and a woman. Not much to look at in this stage. I've got This is just copies. such, I'm, we're looking around the room here in your studio and to do your work, I'm sure you just need about everything you can think of. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and so this is your workspace. And in Benton's Port, you have a gallery uh, shop yes. on the main uh, strip. Yes. Um, with samples of your work. Yes. And pictures, things for sale. Yes. It's very nice. So if you're in Bettensport, you should stop by and take a look at that. Um, let's go over. Maybe we'll. Now, Chris, you were telling me about this piece. It's a private commission piece. Yes. Tell me what you're doing with this. Th this is an it would be an angel reading a book, and. And I, this, the person that commissioned me to do this, uh, it'll be her memorial, and then she's got one for her husband, which is an aerial view of their farm and the surrounding landscape with an eagle flying overhead. That's in relief, and the, then the eagle's uh, wing comes out of the, the relief plane. Um, she's basically a patron as well, and she wanted me to get going with memorials on a real consistent basis. These will be displayed. In, they'll be in bronze. This will be in bronze. This will be black granite, and there'll be a red book, granite book here. They'll dis be displayed at Miller Brothers in Iowa City. Okay. So these are. This will be made to be a uh, gravestone marker. Yeah. Type. The names and the dates will be right here. Okay. And this will be what. Uh, this will be a possibility. It'll be like a commission that someone could do. Even this one could be. Uh, copies could be made of this one. Okay. And it could be changed in the wax. She could have a child here. She could have a right. whatever. I think that'd be neat yeah. out in the garden. That's right. It could be in any kind of <laughs> any kind of material, oh. so on. And up there, I've already I've got um, some small angels that I'm uh, preparing, and we're going to punch a hole clear through the granite. They'll be flying right inside this kind of a rough Ooh, hole neat. on a stainless steel rod. And then I've got two portraits, relief portraits of people. Um, mm -hmm. They'll be on granite and. They're up there now, and several things, some wildlife pieces. Okay. Doing. So that's great you're doing that. Um, we're going to move over here, and before we tell you about our special project, I think I wanted Chris to, uh, you showed us some things in here, the uh, project in California, Culver. Oh, that's, that's the next one. Um, we're talking about where you've been and, and <laughs> I feel great that, that you kind of started in Fairfield. Oh, I a little bit. So, got to start I somewhere. Can, I can claim that. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. <laughs> and now here you are preparing a, a, a piece that could possibly go in Culver. It'll go. Um, and I, it's beautiful. It was a contest that I won. I started with, I started with that because it was a low budget. I was going to do it in just welded plate bronze. They wanted more figures. I thought, well, what can I do? So I went to this where I did a, instead of, that was square dancing. This went to more people sharing wisdom. Then I had another idea. Uh, was this before you won the, the competition or after? Uh, during. during. I was out there okay. twice. Then I, Oh, and here's a third one. Let's see if I can find it. I did one large commission piece for uh, Clarinda Mental Health. Yes. And, uh, I know trying to, to work with them and get what they want, what you want to do, yes. is a challenge. It is a challenge. Compromise. Um, always. Well, again, I'm, a, I, I, I'm here to serve the client. What they want, right, I'll give them. Right. This is the, the third, and I twisted the panel, so I put script, proverbs, and stuff in the back, and you have the, the different generations. This is a waterfall coming down and around that 
that it's column, quite a big panel. From the first one. That's right. It just they wanted to see it from all sides, so I twisted the panel. Now. And then in the end, I thought, this is this is what they want. They they I kept offering in a in a fiberglass some dancing figures because originally I had done the dancing figures, and in the end. In the this end, is what I really like. <laughs> in the end, I offered bronze figures, but no fountain because I couldn't, with their budget, I couldn't afford the fountain. But if they want to up the budget, they can do the fountain. So it's two Isn't seniors. Isn't that beautiful? They're they're swirling and dancing and and this and is waltz. for a senior citizen. Se yeah, it's, area. A, it's a new senior center that's being built in Culver City. This is gorgeous, and here is that's the architectural plan. The senior. Yeah, see, and this is the dancers in front. They're a little bit over life size. Instead of the instead of a fountain, I put a, what I call a soft garden around okay. it. Okay. Flowers, and the seniors will have the opportunity to the garden clubs put in that the um, flower garden, just like they did in Indianola. That one okay. piece I did for them. It's got to be fun, uh, thinking these things up and traveling and working with people and. It, oh yeah, it's it's inspiring. I mean, it's uh, I. I don't know, I just, I put out five or six proposals a month, send them everywhere. Uh -huh. And I'll see, a, I'll see a contest, and if I can't think of an idea within, I'll read the prospectus, and I'll think of an idea immediately, and that's what I go with. The first inclination My is first, usually the best. And that's what I go with, and, uh -huh. and that's, I mean, this one kind of took a winding trail and came back to where I, where you started. Where I started. That's neat. Sure. But it's, it's, that's, I can just think of a project in four seconds, but it might take four years to get it together. So you're never wasting your time, mm -hmm. you know, on, on a project or with someone because it usually comes around. That's right. And, that's right. And talking about coming around, um, on the special project that we're going to talk about, uh, when I was president of the Art Association and had you you came to Fairfield and we worked with you. Also on our board was Kitty Turney. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, that's where I met her. Yes, she was on the Art Association board. She lived in Fairfield at the time and I had went to school with her daughter and she's a dear sweet lady and energetic and creative, artistic and so... Uh, and she knows what she wants. Yes, she does. <laughs> you know her. I haven't seen her for several years now. She lives in Des Moines. Um, but anyway, I went to school with Virginia. We always called her Gigi. And I have lots of memories of her, and we'll share some of those memories uh, that I asked for. But um, Virginia was killed in a car accident in 97, December, t almost... Uh, 98, I think. Oh, it was December 97, yes. yes. So it's coming up on two years this month that we lost her, and she was uh, only 48, no, oh, no, no 42. six, 40, I, 42, I've got 43, the, the something article, like that. so I will uh, read yeah. that in a while, but very much too young to have this happen. And uh, Kitty's um, other daughter, Catherine, I believe, gave me a call and uh, thanked me for something we had done for a class reunion or memorial. And she remembered you. Kitty. Oh, Catherine did? Kitty remembered oh, you. Oh, Kitty did, yes. Wanted to know, to get in touch with you to do a memorial for Virginia in Story City where um, she had resided. And so I put her in touch with you through her sister Catherine, right. and you've connected, and mm -hmm. you're doing a great project for Story City, and that's what we're going to talk about now. So um, let's come over here, and you can tell us a little bit about uh, how this project... I'll go over here. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> tell us how... Uh, this project is going, what it's involved and things? Uh, well, I, I met with uh, Catherine, I met with Kitty. Um, what do you want? What, what materials? What do you want to spend? That sort of thing. I met with the people at the library, the librarian and somebody on the library board. Where do you want to put it? You know, mm. And there's some variables. Ended up doing it at more of a coal cast bronze, just the fiberglass with, with bronze fill versus a bronze. Um, 
then they gave me pictures, told me stories, sent me a video oh. that had uh, Virginia in that video when she was, I don't know, 41, 42, something like uh -huh. that. <coughs> and then um, they decided to do Virginia as a little girl reading because that's, she's intellectual. She was. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, and being in Story City also. What is it? What does that have to do? Story, yes. city. <laughs> yes. Was she on the library board? Uh, I don't know. School board. I know she was very. I think she was on school board. Active. She was in very active. Community. Yes. Yeah, she was. She was um, a, a gunner. She was 44 um, when she died on December 30th in '97 um, in a car accident near Marshalltown. And uh, she was born June 23rd in '53 in Fairfield, the daughter of Dylan and Catherine Van Dyke Turney. And she lived in Fairfield until she moved to Story City in 1978. She was an assistant public defender for the state's public defender's office. Um, and she married Fred Larson in, in 77. She was a member of Grace United Methodist Church and PEO and on the school board. So um, we were right on that. But she graduated with me at the Fairfield High School in 1971, and then she went to University of Iowa and Drake Law School. And she has two sons, John and Peter, and a daughter, Carrie. So we're looking at some photos here of her growing up, and so you use these for some of the uh I use it as the reference. They, they weren't even... It wasn't as important to them that it looked a, a portrait of her as it was just the impression of who she was and what she did. And uh, I remember uh, she was a class officer mm -hmm. in my class and very well liked by everyone. I mean, I didn't know anyone that didn't like her. She was so much fun, very intelligent. I remember we voted for her to uh, give our graduation speech. Mm -hmm. And I think there was some controversy that teachers didn't want her to because... Uh, they knew she'd tell the truth. She? <laughs> yes. I remember at school um, her wearing black armbands mm -hmm. protest. Mm -hmm. She was very outspoken, very, uh, very wonderful person. You knew she was going to do something special, mm -hmm. and she did. Mm -hmm. So let's. Uh, move what I, what I did is I hired a model. Okay. Um, Samantha Fisher. She's I think she's six, maybe seven, and she's a daughter of Beth Fisher. She's from Fairfield. And I used Beth and her sister Delaine and and Samantha for several projects, and I've used uh, Samantha for another project, another enlargement I did for someone for Trinity Hospital. And those yeah. are for the actual armature and size and yeah and, and the clay and then I use her for for the form and everything and oh she her face is quite a bit different from Virginia's when she was a child so I, I use the photographs for the face but I was even using my own child for his hands and, and this right. this 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 thing in his eyes where it's just so innocent up there right. I, I couldn't quite get it from the photographs so I used little Chris last night and Oh, he's always, he's always willing. <laughs> Just so long as I go in and draw with him. Now, um, uh, here's, you do have some photos. Oh, here's uh, Virginia when she's a little bit older. But <laughs> this is a little, I remember her. The uh, little like Fisher this. girl. And then uh, this would be an example of what a model would have to do to actually pose for the, uh, the shapes and the way she would be sitting. Oh, here's an here's an armature picture way down inside the clay and the armature is the the base out of metal. It's aluminum armature. It's just twisted in the shape of the figure. The first part that you do. And that's the blocking in of the clay. So this this uh, project has progressed, and we now have it down to the clay. Is it's it's done. So yes, it's ready to go to the molder. Okay. Let's take a look at this, and we need to, with our wires, come around this way. Um, 
we're looking at the piece here, and she's on a real chair. Yes, um, this, um, the back, I've taken it off so I could have access to the back. What I'm going to do, and this will be the core of, of, the, of the cast chair. Oh, I'll the put, chair will be cast. Well, no. No. I'm j the girl will be cast, the chair won't. The chair, this will be the core inside the fiberglass uh, okay. and, and uh, bronze mix. I'll just, I'll put fibers and, and bronze mix what right over top of the chair. What will she be setting at? This. In the actual display? A real this. chair? This is it. It'll be inside, but there'll be a veneer of okay. the, of the <laughs> cast bronze fiberglass on top of it. Okay. This is my chair that I acquired from them, and then I bought them another chair. Uh huh. The uh, the library. So she's in this little taffeta dress, and um, which over here um, we have a little model. Yeah, just they, wearing the dress just for the purpose the, of the, that. They, um, I at least got an idea of some of it. This is more cotton, and in the picture it was more sateen when she was three or something like that. But it gives the idea. It gave the idea a little sailor dress, and I always have a mannequin. This has got aluminum armature in it to it, too, so I can just bend them however I want them. Put the a lot of Penny's stores closed out in Fairfield, and the town went everywhere. <laughs> and I had a good friend that worked at Penny's, and he gave me mannequins all ages, generations, and genders, and everything. And so I've got them filled with aluminum wire and. Okay. I hang them up and here and That's there. That's an important tool in creating a sculpture is yes. to get the uh, sizes and exact, correct. Well, no, I don't use this for the model. No. But for the but clothing. I uh, See, you, nobody's going to sit like this for hours. Right. So if I want the folds like that, then they're there. <laughs> right. And I can just, and this is my turntable. And then, the, of course, the model's on the turntable. So I just turn it according to the side, the front, the rear, and... And, and copy the folds uh -huh. in clay, see. How long has it taken you to get to this point? Oh, too long, always too long. <laughs> when did you start? I started it probably in June. I mean, it was June or, or May, I can't remember. Something Is this like a that. special clay? Is this a potter's it, clay? It, no, well, it's got potter's clay in it, but it's, a, it's called plastiline. It's, I've got barrels and barrels of it. It's, it's kind of a wax and clay mix. It never dries out. Oh, okay. And I, if I want it softer, I, I have it in a bucket with a hair dryer, and I just heat it up a little bit. Okay. And then I get it soft. I can work quickly. If I need it stiff, I let it cool and I mm -hmm. work it. I can even work it with water. I mean, to get it the the more smoother surfaces, I'll I'll just dip my fingers or or the tool and wooden tool in water. Sometimes oil. You can do it in oil too, and I can get some of the some of the marks out. It's got just enough clay in it that it dissolves it still with a little bit of water on the surface areas. But in general, you, it won't stick to itself very well if you try and stick it to itself, but it really mm -hmm. refines it nice with just your, your hands and so on and a little bit of water just because it still has clay in it. Now, do you sign this piece anywhere? Oh, I forgot to. <laughs> oh, no, yes. I, I'm glad you reminded me. Shall you? I sign it right now? Sure. Shall, I, shall we sign we'll this sign right this now? On camera. I I I often forget to sign my pieces. You know what? What? I do too. Because I, I get that. so involved in uh, making it, getting it out the door. You're in it. You're, That's right. You're in it, and um, where's a good place to sign it? Well, where do you usually sign? I could be the author of the book. <laughs> That's a good idea. No, I don't think no, no, no. You should say something about that book. Yes. Because you know. Her. I was asking about why uh, we're going to watch you here. All right. I hate signing my name also. I never, I feel like I can't get it right uh, with the piece that it maybe sticks out or something. Um, I I didn't used to sign it because I thought it was an ego thing to sign your work. Then I realized, oh yeah, it's something that you've, it shows that you, that uh, you did it and and you you're responsible for it. And you should. It's not so much ego as you you're responsible for it. And I date it. Um, th they my teacher used to say, and he's an Egyptian with King Farouk. He said, you're. Your signature is for you, and the date is for the king. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> huh. 
Well, back to the book on the top. I was asking how this actual book page is going to show up and the purpose. And um, if anyone remembers the leapfrog, we use the Fairfield Ledger, a special edition. Um, and this one you said you, you hoped that you get Pella? Pella Engraving. Pella Engraving. Their engraving company. What they're going to do is I'll send them this page or another copy of it uh, and they will uh, etch it into a polymer. Mm -hmm. The polymer should be just flexible enough even if they etch it into a, a zinc or magne magnesium or whatever that metal is I, I will conform it to the book mm -hmm. and then when I make a mold in the book, so the book slides out of there Okay. and I can and the letters there will be just enough uh, the darker parts will go down and the highlights will stay up. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they'll want it in black and white or not. They'll take care of that. But I'll conform it to the book and there'll be just enough contrast to the lower and higher that you can make a mold on it. Okay. Now if they don't do that, you said you would have to do a relief. Yeah, I just make the, I'll just make it in relief and somehow I'll get some type and put it on there. But uh, going back to the person that this is representing. Yes. Um, what an appropriate uh, selection that they chose. Yes, uh, her sister Catherine sh sent this book, and I didn't even know what book she had sent for a long time. I just had it on a shelf, and I realized it was a little engine it could. And, and I turned it to just about the last page where the train is just going up the top of the mountain and still saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And then the next page is, hurrah, hurrah, the, we've, we've made it. And the next last page is, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. But that scene, I realized that was representing her totally life. representative of this, this woman that I, I really don't know anything about her, but little, little tidbits. <laughs> and uh, she definitely rose all the way to the top, mm -hmm. I think, in her life. And, uh, and I'm glad we have it on this page where she's up there at the top. That's, that's a good notion. And uh, then, um, then we had to lose her. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I did write some of my classmates to come up with some things. I knew Gigi pretty well, but not as well as some others. And so I wrote some classmates and I asked for them to contribute maybe some thoughts that uh, would go along with this videotape. And I did receive um, some, some are funny, some are sentimental. Harry Strong, who is a classmate that lives in Des Moines, um, said, well, a student at Drake, Gigi spent more time playing bridge than in class. She could always be found in a game in the dorm. <laughs> when bored with bridge, Gigi and her friends at Drake would spend hours writing letters to Dear Abby to see who could get more tall tales published in the syndicated prob uh, <laughs> column. Gigi claimed several personal victories. Um, That's hilarious. Yes. And then a, a special friend of Gigi was Mike Lamb. And he writes, thank you for your letter rec regarding Virginia. Her death was a tragedy, and I think your project is a wonderful idea to m memorialize this very special person. I used to joke with Gigi that outside my family, she was my oldest friend. We met in kindergarten at Washington School in Mrs. Taylor's class, September 1958. <laughs> we grew up on East Burlington Street, less than two blocks apart, so they would see each other daily walking to and from school. Virginia always was so smart and funny and quick with a quip or retort. Bright, enthusiastic, with her red hair, she was a real spitfire who was always on. She was naturally talented at everything she attempted. I remember she painted and colored beautiful pictures when she was young. She was also a terrific athlete. We used to bowl together in a bowling league. In the summer, we'd play tennis and golf. And I vividly recall in seventh grade, Virginia and I attended uh, Washington School, seventh grade, at the high school football stadium. We were terrible, and we got trounced by Washington. However, our very best player <laughs> turned out to be Gigi. <laughs> in the last half, we put her in as our running back, and she made some <laughs> of the best only plays we had all the game. She may have scored the only touchdown we made. <laughs> 
<laughs> Typical GG. In high school, Virginia con continued her pursuit of excellence in a of rare, varied arenas. She was active in speakers club, state forensics contests. She was co-editor of the Troy Banner, helped it achieve all st American rating. She sang in the choir. She was elected to National Honor Society in her junior year and was in the most engaging, I remember this, cuckoo pigeon sister in the odd couple <laughs> her senior year. And I remember during our junior year in high school, we went to the Methodist Church sponsored trip to Kansas City to paint and renovate a small church in the ghetto. During that trip, uh, Mike and Gigi spent many hours talking about the issues of the day, Vietnam, racism, women's liberation, and her desire to make changes and the world different. She was, Mike was so impressed with her passion and her goals. Those glimpses of her future were borne out by what followed. She became an attorney, respected community leader, activist in Story City, plus a loving mother and wife. That potential was always there. However, Virginia had the drive and ability to take that potential and turn it into reality. She made a difference for those people in Story City as well as those who grew up with her in Fairfield. A national fabric of characters woven from individual threads of humanity and goodness. Virginia was one such thread. And um it's always a good writer. Mike, Who wrote that? Mike Lamb, that's Charlotte Lamb's son. Um, and he is very good with words. He's a, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So um this piece is going from here to Fairfield yes. soon. Yes. Uh, a young man that I did some training, I tra trained him with sculpture. He apprenticed with me for mm, almost two years, year and a half, uh, Travis Hunt. Uh -huh. And then he, he works at MaxCast in Kelowna, which is a foundry now. And he, he's apprenticing basically with a mold maker there, and he's taking on some jobs himself. So he'll be um, in Fairfield being molded. Okay. Uh, and this will be very soon. That's why we're here today. Yeah, I is, need to uh, crate it tomorrow. You're going to crate this up and get it to Fairfield to be worked on, and he will cast it in bronze. He, he's just going to make the mold. Going to make the mold. Where will it be cast, then? Well, I'm not sure. He's going to bid, bid it, and then I, then I have another place in Kansas City I'm going to have bid it. And if they don't meet my standards, I'll do it. You will do it. <laughs> I'll do it myself. So we might be back here. <laughs> sure. Might be back here, the mold. Okay. Um, right now, I'm just trying to subcontract as much as I can. Uh, out so I can just concentrate, concentrate on the design, getting the work this. in and design because I've got so many things going on and I'm, I'm needing to get someone to do setup for me. Travis is doing some setup for me also, mm -hmm. especially some small reliefs and so on. That's, that's nice. I'm glad that your career has been so successful. <laughs> well, busy anyway. Yes. <laughs> I don't, and, I don't uh, think much about it. And when you do something like this that represents uh, a special person in their life, there's got to be a lot of gratification. Oh, I enjoy it. Um, I, d I don't, again, I just do it. And I hardly think about it. I mean, once you, you've you collected your data and you're going to do it, you don't think about it until it's done and installed. And then, <laughs> then, then you, think, you can sit back. Right. And, uh, and like the piece in Oskaloosa, the, the uh, George Daly, Travis was working here at that time. He set it up for me. He had a man across the river come and model. He was just the perfect stature and everything. And then I came in and I detailed it. Another person molded it and then went to the foundry. I barely touched it except it had my That's work on it and I designed it and I got the project. But the response to it is, and as I look at it, it's probably one of the better pieces I've done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I just do it. I just got to get it out the door. I think and that's a part of right. the art process is when you're involved <laughs> in it, you become that project and you don't yeah. think oh, about it. I don't it. think anything of it. You don't. Yeah. Um, I've had that experience myself. Will you uh, be at the dedication when they place this, I would think? I suppose so. I haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. Uh, you know, are you not even sure when it's going to be dedicated or when I'm going to get it there? I mean, I hope to get it there by, mm, it'd be nice to get it there by the spring. Uh -huh. or, or at least by, maybe by, there's no real deadline on it, but I have to get it out. I've just got, a, got too many other things going. Right. It's a beautiful work, and um, I think they'll be very happy with it. Thank you.
um, I did have one more uh, one more uh, letter from Suzanne Waits, who was also in our class and a friend of Gigi's. Um, and she says, do you remember the store called Cyphers? Well, one year, midi coats were very popular, and Gigi wanted one in particular, and I guess her parents weren't too excited about buying it. So I remember going with her there and charging it, and she wrapped it up, and she put it under the Christmas tree <laughs> with a note <laughs> about the gift being from her parents, and uh, she was very clever. <laughs> And I, I remember the coat, too. It was a warm sort of plaid wool that looked perfect with her red hair. And do you remember the singer-poet Rod McEwen? Well, Gigi thought his stuff was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> she had good taste. <laughs> he had an especially scratchy voice on his albums. So uh, she and Susan Ball would give each other Rod McEwen items as a joke. And they'd <laughs> remember sitting in Gigi's bedroom one afternoon on a weekend listening to the awful album and it was such fun to watch her giggle. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too, um, her giggle. I remember Gigi in general as such a positive person in her class. She was intelligent and well-spoken. She seemed like she would grow up and do good things, useful things, and it sounds like she did. And she definitely did. Virginia Turney Larson. <laughs>